Okay, guys, I'd like to continue our discussion of momentum um, by moving on to a really common, famous topic and example of momentum, and that's uh, the, the case of collisions. Collisions. So. This is a very famous, classic example of applying uh, momentum conservation. So we just learned about momentum conservation and we're not leaving it behind. Momentum conservation is going to stay with us and we're going to apply it to this case of objects that are undergoing collisions. Obviously a collision occurs whenever two or more objects smash into one another or bang into one another in, in, in some way, shape, or form. And in a minute we'll take a look at two basic types of collisions and we'll, we'll analyze each different type of collision. But let's just remember um, our, what we had, the uh, uh, momentum conservation concept. Let's make sure that we remember momentum conservation. So, momentum conservation. You might remember what we had said in the last module was that the sum of the momenta initially has to equal the sum of the momenta at the end. So, this applies um, to all cases, and we're going to look at some special applications of this principle uh, in this video. But basically, remember what this is saying, that if you take all of the individual pieces at the beginning, add up their individual momenta, the total momentum at the beginning has to be equal to the sum of all their momenta at the end. So the momentum can't go anywhere. It can't disappear. It can't come out of nowhere. It has to be conserved. Um, and so we'll apply this, this equation, this principle, to these two specific cases right now. So there are two, two basic types of collisions. Let's, let's deal with them in turn. Um, I guess we can start with what are called elastic collisions. Collisions. Elastic collisions are collisions, this word elastic, you're familiar with that word, think of like a rubber band. Um, I'll explain why we use the word elastic to explain this type of collision in a minute. But an elastic collision is when two objects collide and they don't stick together. They don't become entangled. They instead bounce off of one another. So um, the objects collide and don't stick together. Um, they bounce off of one another. So the, the um, typical example, maybe the classic example of this, are billiard balls. Right? If you're playing pool and you've got two balls that are colliding into one another, they don't um, stick together upon collision. They bounce off of one another. And this is a, a good model for an elastic collision. Um, a key element of this, the, the reason this word elastic comes into play is in an elastic collision, and, and a collision that's perfectly elastic, 100% elastic, the objects when they collide do not deform. They don't change shape. They retain their shape. Um, so if you think about a billiard ball, when it collides with another billiard ball, it doesn't suddenly cease to become a ball. It doesn't like hit and deform. It hits, and there might, actually might be a moment of, of deformation there, but it will bounce back to its original shape. Um, so, uh, you know, this wouldn't be true if I took a ball of pizza dough and threw it against the wall. It doesn't. That's, that, wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be an example of an elastic collision because the pizza dough, when it hits the wall, will deform. It will change shape, unlike the billiard ball. So the, one of the key details of this term elastic is to indicate that there's no deformation, no change in shape. So what would this look like? Well, this is going to be really, um, if, if we apply the momentum conservation principle, this is going to be really straightforward because what you're saying is you're going to have two objects before they collide. They hit each other, bounce off one another, and you're going to have two objects again after the collision. So let's imagine that we had a case of billiard balls. Maybe we have two different billiard balls. Maybe we've got one here. Um, here's, uh, here's our first ball and here's our second ball. And let's say that this is before the collision. And then we'll, we'll take a look at after the collision. So this is before. And maybe, um, let's, say they, let's say that they have the same mass. Let's say that they have a mass of 0.4 kilograms. And 
and let's say that uh, uh, billiard this this one here billiard ball number one or let's call it billiard ball A is moving at three meters per second and let's say that billiard ball zero is not moving it's at rest so this is going to be a collision. Billiard ball A is moving, 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 and it smashes into, collides with billiard ball B. And let's just say that after the collision, that um, billiard ball A now is slowed down. Okay, so let's say that billiard ball A now has, as a result of the collision, has decreased its speed. Maybe now it's going this way, um, still going to the right, but only at one meter per second. Okay, well, the question then is, what's, what's happening to billiard ball B? Okay, what's, what, what's going on? What's his velocity? Has he gained some speed, or is he still at rest, or what's he doing? Um, it may be pretty obvious to you just looking at this that if billiard ball A lost momentum, then billiard ball B must have gained momentum. That maybe, isn't, maybe shouldn't surprise you too, too much to realize that that's the case, but let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and see if we can actually do out the math on this and, and determine what exactly would be, this, be the speed of billiard ball B. So um, I'm going to use this old equation, our uh, energy conservation, right? And I'm going to say MV for ball A initially, A initial, plus the momentum MV of ball B initial has to equal MV of ball A finally at the end plus mv of ball b final. Okay, that's, this is our basic momentum conservation principle. So this is momentum conservation. Make note of that. So we're using momentum conservation to analyze the situation. So now we know all of these values. We know the m's, right? The mass doesn't change. These billiard balls are all 0.4 kilograms, both before and after. We know the initial velocity of A. We know the initial velocity of B. We know the final velocity of A. The only thing we don't know is this, right? The only thing that's unknown here is the final velocity of billiard ball B. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. Well, we get 0 0.4 times 3 plus 0, sorry, that back. 0.4 times 0, right, this is the mass of B times B's velocity initially, equals 0.4 times 1 plus 0.4 times V. And there's our unknown, right? This is the only number that we're, we don't have. That's what we're looking for. One quick note, I haven't had to, I haven't really had to worry in this problem about positives and negatives, right? Because everything here is moving to the right. Billiard ball A is moving to the right, billiard ball A is moving to the right again at the end, billiard ball B is not moving to the left at any point. So I haven't really had to be too, too careful about my signs in this problem, but some, just as a warning, sometimes you do have to pay attention. All right, so what do we get here? We get 1.2 plus 0, 0.4 times 0, 0, equals 0.4 plus V. 0.4 times 1 is 0.4, sorry plus 0.4 times V, right, 0.4 V. So now, simplify here. I'm going to move the 0.4 over, and I'm going to get 0.8 equals 0.4 V. Divide both sides by 0.4, and I get V equals 2 meters per second. Final answer. Okay, so let's go back and see if that makes sense. What I've just told you now is after the collision, the billiard ball B is moving at 2 meters per second. And let's see if that just conceptually in this simple example makes sense. Well, billiard ball, three is going at, or billiard ball A is going at 3 meters per second before. Billiard ball B is not moving. Okay, so billiard ball A slows from 3 down to 1. Ask yourself, does it make sense then that billiard ball B would be sped up to 2 meters per second? I think you, you, you should hopefully realize that that, that, that is a, an answer that does make sense. If the, if the masses are all the same, if the total velocity initially was 3, the total velocity at the end must also be 3. 2 plus 1 equals 3. So it, is a, it, it does, on the face of it, appear to be a reasonable answer. Um, sometimes 
the answer won't be so obvious. But um, you know, if, if these two masses were different, it might not be so obvious what the final uh, velocity of billiard ball B was. But um, this setup will always work for these types of collisions, these elastic collisions. You have two or more objects at the beginning and then two or more objects at the end. And you can just analyze the problem in terms of momentum conservation. All right, let's uh, move on. I mentioned that there are two different kinds of collisions. So this was elastic. The second type of collision, no great surprise, is called inelastic. Ooh, switch back to white. These are inelastic. So if an elastic collision is when the two ob two or more objects bang into one another and don't change sh or, or or don't change shape, bounce off one another, this is exactly the opposite. This is when two objects collide and stick together. So in this case, the objects collide and stick together, becoming essentially a single object. Okay. So, lots of examples of this. Um, in the earlier example, I talked about a, a ball of pizza dough, right? If I took a ball of pizza dough and threw it at the wall and it sticks to the wall, that's an elastic collision. Or um, sometimes you might have a situation where two cars collide, right? There's a car collision and the two cars become sort of entangled with one another. That would be an example. If they become sort of entangled together, that would be an inelastic collision. A um, uh, good example might be um, an example maybe in a football game you have one person tackling another person and that for that moment is like an inelastic collision right because you've got two, two players both of whom are moving separately then one player tackles another and they become one object you can treat the tackled mess as one object so that's the example I'm going to use is the football tackle So let's, um, let's see how this works out. We're going to use the same idea of momentum conservation again, but it's going to look a little bit different now. Okay, so we're going to use this same principle here, but it's going to look a little bit different. Um, and the reason it's going to look different, you're going to see here, is that um, after the collision, they become one object. So it's going to look a little different. And you'll, I hope to illustrate that now in this example. Okay, so let's imagine we have a case where we've got two football players um, Here's one football player here, and here's another football player. And let's imagine now we're going to make this a little bit trickier. Now they're going to be moving towards one another. Okay, they're they're running towards one another. And so let's say that this guy right here, the first football player, has a mass of 80 kilograms. And let's say that this guy here, he's a little bit bigger. He's got a mass of 120 kilograms. And before the collision, they're running at one another. So this guy's going this way, and this guy's going this way. And let's say that this uh, football player is going at 2 meters per second, and this guy's going at 1 meter per second. Right away, notice they're not moving in the same direction. I'm going to have to consider that when I start doing the math. When I start plugging in the equation, I have to take into consideration that these velocities are not in the same direction. All right, so that's before. Let's see what happens after. Well, after, there's a, there's a collision and they stick together, right? They tackle one another, so it's going to be some sort of tangled up mess here. Okay, they're some mangled mess. Of, they're now one object. Okay, so the way I'm going to write that is M1 plus 2. Okay, they are one object. That's the whole point. So this is a single object, M1 plus 2. Okay. And what I'm going to ask you is, okay, well, what's their velocity? What is the, what's the, the, the velocity of this tangled mess? What is that, that, that velocity after they collide? All right, well, let's go ahead and use our momentum conservation principle again. We're going to see that this is going to look a little bit different now. Let's set it up. Well, we have m1, v1. Actually, let's use a and b again because that's what we used last time. So here's person a. Here's person B, and this is them together. I used A and B before. So let's say um, 
uh, the momentum of football player A, MVA initial, plus the momentum of B initial, equals now the momentum MV of A plus B final. So you can see this looks a little bit different now because since they've collided and become essentially one object here, I don't have two separate momenta on the right hand side of the equation. I'm treating the, the after condition as a single object. So I don't have two terms separated by a plus sign over here. I've just got this one term. Um, that's different than up here, right? Let's go back right here. We had two terms, right? Two different terms separated by a plus sign. In this case, that's not what's happening because I'm treating the after as a single object. The two football players tangled up together, I'm treating as a single object. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in our values. And remember, we do have to take into consideration that there's a directional difference here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose in my problem, I'm going to choose to go up here and call this positive 2, and that makes this negative 1, okay? So I'm choosing, in my world, I'm choosing to call this direction here the positive direction. That's my free choice. You could have called the 1 positive and the 2 negative. It doesn't matter. Um, so we're looking for this velocity. You might first ask yourself, well, which way is this velocity going to be positive or negative? Who, in, in, in essence, who's going to win this collision? Who has more momentum? You might be able to do a quick calculation to realize that actually person A is going to be the, the football player with more momentum. Um, your quick calculation, you may be able, to be able to figure that out. If not, we're about to prove it. So let's plug in our values. We've got 80, momentum of uh, player A, 80 times positive 2. That's A, plus momentum of player B, that's 120 times negative 1, equals the momentum of the total mass. Well, what is the mass of A plus B? Well, that's 80 plus 120. So the M after is 80 plus 120 times V, OK? This right here, don't get tripped up by this term. This right here, this is M. A plus B, okay, 80 plus 120. That's what this thing is right here. Okay, so we can go ahead and simplify now. 80 times 2, that's positive 160 plus negative 120. 120 times negative 1 is negative 120 equals 200 V. Go ahead and simplify the left-hand side. 120 plus an, or 160 plus a negative 120, that's going to be 40 on the left hand side equals 200 V. Divide both sides by 200 and I get V equals positive 0.2 meters per second. Okay, so final answer right there. Well, What does that mean? Well that means that together they go in the positive direction which I've said is to the right. So in other words when they collide they're going to go this way. Indeed, we see that player A, in a sense, wins the collision. Not because he's heavier, right? Player 1 is actually uh, has a smaller mass than player 2, but he's moving faster than, than player 2, so therefore he ends up winning this collision. He's moving twice as fast. And so together they collide and move to the right at 0.2 meters per second. So there you have it. That's... Uh, two basic types of collisions. We have elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. Um, there are lots of different problems involving both of these. Uh, the principle is the same. In both cases, we're just using this, this equation here, the, the equation that we've used for momentum conservation. The difference is, in an elastic collision, you have multiple objects before and after. Whereas in an inelastic collision, you have multiple objects initially and only one object at the end because in an inelastic collision, they collide and become a single object. All right, a um, lot of information. Uh, we're going to do practice problems in next class, and, and, and hopefully that will help you um, fully process the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. See you then.